The sponsor of today's video is PCBWay. If you have any projects that you want to get done and or assembled, then PCBWay is going to be a great choice. I've been using them for the past couple years and by far one of the best services I've used, whether you're a hobbyist and or professional alike. So definitely check the links down below. Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So it's really nice to see that we have some new components out in the market and I haven't seen these in quite or I haven't seen anything new in quite a while. And uh, it's really refreshing because this is it's just been a bit slow recently, if you know what I mean. So let's get started here. So we'll start off with some stacks or just basically the components and then we'll move along to FPV drones. Now, the first one that actually caught my eye is this, even though it's not really new. This is from Mumba here. And what we see, it's a 20 by 20 stack. Now they're calling it the race and you know that's fine because if they called their other 20 by 20 the race then i would be very hesitant to say yes because you know mumba is really good but their 20 by 20s are not the best in high demanding setups however this one here i really want to get a closer look at the esc but it's completely shielded it looks pretty nice uh, i can't tell anything but it does seem to be using pretty large fets which is a good sign and these seem to be like huge fat heat sinks, 60 amps. Wow, that's pretty crazy. And it is slightly bigger, so I am guessing they were able to fit those uh, larger uh, fets on there instead of the tiny 3x3. Three three. So uh, let's hope that's the case. The flight controller is just fine on their mini stacks. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, however, the price is a bit steep here. Um, but yeah, if you want something that small and hopefully performs good, then maybe this might be the one. I'll be uh, doing ESC noise testing again very soon on the channel. And by the way, everything here is linked down below in the order we check them out. So this is a really nice thing that caught my eye. Uh, this is also really nice, just easy, just easy, like just marketing. That's why they wrote easy. Uh, just to know that it's just plug and play. Actually, no, this is super easy. So I'm guessing they're going to provide you with all the connectors you need for just about everything. Uh, so that's the whole idea of this here, which could be very good for people who really can't solder. And the ESC that's provided is a good ESC. I think it's the F50, if I'm correct. Yes, it's the F50. Um, it's around 108 bucks, which is pretty steep. But, you know, um, a lot of things have jumped up in price recently. And this is by far one of my favorite ESCs. Uh, the F50, BL Heli S and BL Heli 32 uh, from Mumba. Those are really good price to performing ESCs. So considering that ESC, I think it's around 60 bucks if I'm not correct, if I'm correct. And so the flight controller here is pretty damn expensive actually. Um, but you know, look at all this, their new Mumba lineups. See, like I would, I would probably go with this one here, especially if you know how to solder, because I could tell it's already one of the F50s or F60 ESCs right there. And it's 90 bucks. But it comes down to your budget, really. Here's another one for 87. Let's actually double check this. Again, all of these are linked in the order we check them out. So this is a DJI compatible one. I want to see if it has an on-screen display because I don't want to recommend it when it doesn't. And then, you know, you want to do an analog setup. And next thing you know, you have no OSD for the analog. So let me just quickly double check that. So it does seem to have on-screen display, at least uh, it's saying that down here. So let's hope it does on the other side of this. Uh, so this is probably one of the best budget stacks you could probably purchase right now. Um, and I'm planning on doing like a super cheap build in the upcoming days. I'm just collecting all the parts currently right now. Now, here's something else. Hobbywing. They're still in the market. And um, <clears throat> Hobbywing, you know, I've had a really bad experience with them once, but it's it's not really fair to keep holding that experience against them. But they're always going for those little tiny, super, super tiny FETs. And that's what one time they did with a 30 by 30. They were using the tiny FETs. And I was just ESC noise testing and it just blew. It looked like this one right here. And ever since then, I haven't really been recommending them because a lot of people ended up blowing them out. And... Um, yeah, so, but maybe they're good. I mean, they've lasted this long. Some people speak highly of, but I've never had the best experience. Um, it is somewhat expensive on the expensive side here, uh, but it could be very good. It just comes down to you. And so yeah, the mounting solutions here are 20 by 20 on the internal part, and these are 30 by 30 on the outside, which you can kind of break off. You can see those holes right there. So if you needed to do that, you can go ahead and do that. So it's kind of nice that it's very flexible, but don't know how it would perform. I'll try to get my hands on it to do some noise testing on. Um, but holy crap, that's really expensive for a flight controller. Even though the flight controllers are all almost identical, there's just a couple of minute differences here and there. And uh, $53, that's that's pretty high actually. Uh, so here, this one is nice due to the fact of its price, but I really hope it's not a clone of anything. And if it is, let us know down in the comment section. So this is a five inch quadcopter. And uh, actually, it looks pretty nice. It, it can hold the DJI setup right there. It has some 3D printed parts. It even has the mount for the GoPro. 
So it looks pretty cool. Let's just double check its mounting solutions here. For 35 bucks, it's really good. We haven't seen anything pretty decent in that price for quite a while. Uh, so it does take 20 by 20 and 30 by 30 as far as I can see. And as a top mount frame, really, really nice. I see a lot of 3D printed parts as well. A lot of 3D printed farts. Uh, so yeah, that's not bad actually. So here we have some new ones. I think we've already covered these, but these I'm still, I think I have one. I, I need to test this. So I believe they have like an F40 and an a F50, but I'd, it looks exactly identical to their latest ones, except it has this little sink heat. I don't even consider this a heat sink. Yeah, it's an EMI shield for electromagnetic interference. Uh, 57 bucks. So I'm guessing this is just their, still their basic F50, which is the one I recommend, but they have this uh, shield here. Now, I've never had a single problem with electromagnetic interference, but I guess some people might have had where they had to do this. Um, so, uh, but it's really nice that they're listening if some people had that, but I haven't heard of any of those issues, at least uh, myself or anybody told me about them. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of nice here. And again, it's around 50 57 bucks. Sometimes you can get them for 50 bucks So here's something cool. So uh, Diatone is trying to enter the video transmitter market now I remember the last time they did that which was like mm, Four years ago. I think maybe they tried something new again, but I remember it was four years ago when their GT 500 I forgot what it was called. It was like one of those newest diatones. It was using 230 something motors at the time it was one of the first ones to actually do that with like 2450 kV or 2700 kV motors. It was like super high kV, super quick little monster. And um, they had video transmitters. I don't know if they've designed it themselves, but it was not Mamba. It was basically Diatone when they first started. And they were just overheat like crazy. And uh, that's the reason why I broke mine. Uh, actually, a couple of them was because due, due to the overheating. So hopefully now they probably went to another manufacturer, probably had it done. And the technology has matured more than back then. Back then it was still very finicky. And uh, there was we didn't even have smart audio and all of those things. So Diatone has been in the game for actually quite some time now. They're trying to rebrand it as Mamba for some reason. I still prefer the Diatone name, but... I don't know what they're up to, uh, but yeah, this is kind of nice. Hopefully it performs well as we can tell it has just about everything you want even a switch here So I'm guessing the switch is like you could turn on and off the power So uh, that comes back to you if you want to go ahead and check that out uh, And again, it'll be also linked down below in the orders. We check them out. Let's just carry on All right, so this one looks interesting, but I don't know if it's old or new here. So let's go ahead and check it out uh, So what do we have the zoo 60 amp and I think it just has a new case I think it's still the same one, but I could be wrong. And it just has a heat sink here. Um, actually, hmm. no, I think this is a new one. I don't think I've ever tested this one. Let's see the filtration. So we have some filtration going on here. The logic board is separated. So you do have more power delivery. And this design has proven itself to be very reliable actually recently. So that's kind of nice. Uh, I just wish they could show us the upper side just to see how the filtration is going on in there. Uh, but I guess we can't see that. So... Um, but it is nice. You have holes for the capacitor. You have a heatsink, and yeah, that's about it. It's VL32. So, however, I consider that to be slightly expensive now because for around 80 bucks, you could get a pretty proper, complete stack. Um, maybe right now isn't the best time to release something that expensive, or probably a chip shortage is increasing all these prices. Uh, 100 bucks for ESE. It's 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 up there now. You know a company we haven't seen anything from recently in the uh, FPV market, which is Maytech. I miss Maytech. They had some really, really good stuff. So we're basically done here. Let's go ahead and see the quadcopters. What kind of quadcopters we have? Let me just pop that out. There we go. All right. So these are the latest and newest 240. Let's see this one. This is Recon 4 Freestyle, I guess. Let's see. So it's not long range. So it's a basic quadcopter. What does it take? It's 250. It's sub 250. It's a, this is a 4S 4 incher. Um, looks pretty nice. I'd really love to fly this one and see how well it performs. I really hope they actually release the 6S version as well. Maybe this is a 6S. Let's double check that. Um, nope. This is 4S as well. This is, however, with the Cadex Vista as far as I believe. Yeah, Vista. So this is coming with the Cadex Vista here. And um, yeah, should be pretty interesting. Uh, sub 250. So if you're looking for a sub 250 four incher, then that might be the one for you, hopefully. AGLRC is well known to release really great stuff recently. I haven't seen anything bad from them. Um, you know, now if we go to what are they called? The uh, the scene whoops. 
they have their use cases but don't buy it as a primary flyer just buy it if you really want to get some footage in specific areas or fly in specific areas to get some footage other than that there's no real reason to own a scene whoop if you're really not trying to do anything cinematic or really trying to capture some shots in areas you're not allowed to go because it just makes no sense to own one just to enjoy it because you cannot enjoy those those are just a tool they're not um they're not made to have fun with, you know, it's just a tool to help you create your videos if you wanted to. But if you want something to enjoy, it's not the kind of quadcopter you should purchase. Um, even honestly, I think if you're a beginner, if you're a beginner, I think it'd give you a pretty bad first experience because you have to fight them quite a lot. And if it's windy, uh, it's not going to be the best to fly. So we have here, let's see what else we have. Hollybro Copus 4 inch HD. So everybody's going down the 4 inch route. It's pretty expensive, Hollybro. Pretty damn expensive. I really hope it performs very well, though. So it's really expensive, actually. Maybe the Cadex is going up in price. What is this? A 6S? No, it's also a 4S. So 4S HD quadcopter here. So you have the Cadex Vista, and you also have a mount for your naked GoPro or your beta cam. I still need to get a beta cam, actually. So let's go ahead and carry on. Oh, this is awesome. This is really awesome. Let's see. Uh, I want this so bad. Now this is really cool here. It's um, actually, I don't know how cool it is, but it's something I actually want. Um, I don't know if it's actually useful, but I think it would be really fun to play around with. Really fun. What are they using? I think this is the GHE MCU or whatever it's called. Mm. Yeah, it's like a generic all in one board. This is like a, <laughs> it looks like a clone of Rush FPV. This is a complete kit or something. What do you get? This is a 3S 2 inch. Does it really come with everything? So this actually seems to come with everything. I think pre-built. Wow, this is actually pretty interesting. It, it'd be worth a try, but I, I'm pretty sure it'd be pretty damn sluggish. Uh, but it would be a fun little platform to test or maybe have your kid or someone try to fly. And, and you'd probably still break those 3D printed parts or these plastics. But I don't know. It depends. It's not a big price to ask for to get all of those components you could actually re repurpose most of those components if they're pretty decent uh but it'll take time to actually uh check that out so hopefully i get my hands on one of those and here's actually a complete kit with a controller this is uh this is getting pretty interesting so ldarc is trying to do something now they've been here in a while they, ha they had questionable quality but i think they're really trying to up their game slightly this is kind of interesting, but that's all I really have to say about it. It's nice that they're using an all-in-one board, something actually somewhat uh, universal or available. So we, it's not something like super uh, proprietary. So it's pretty generic. You can get any, if, if you ever blow this out, you can get a 20 by 20 or just crazy B. I can't really tell. I think this is a crazy B type board. Yeah, I think it's crazy B type board and uh, an AIO. So you should be fine. Let's actually just double check that really quickly. I don't think they'll probably say anything here, but uh, anyways, so yeah, that's, um, yeah, they're trying to do something. That's for sure. You're going to need a pretty powerful battery for that setup right there. I'll have it also linked down below. Again, everything here is linked down below. All right. So this is pretty interesting. This is actually SkyZone. So Adam RC is a sub brand of SkyZone and this is called the Dragonfly Hexa. So this is a three inch. I thought it was actually going to be like a five inch hexacopter because it looked pretty big on the cameras, but yeah, this is just pretty interesting. So it's pretty goddamn expensive. Holy shit, $400. Is it one piece bottom plate? No, it's not. Well, at least that's good. So yeah, if you're looking for something, this could be good. I guess you know your uh, own application. If you need something like that, I, I can tell you if it's going to be good for whatever you want it for or not. And I guess that's currently it, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Everything here is linked down below. And this one just looks pretty damn awesome really quickly. Let's just have a look at it. I, I like just the colors on this. For 200 bucks, what do you get? You get a 4 and a 6S. But which one do I get? Because there's no way to choose here. So we just take a look at the motors. It's probably a 6S. And they just want to make sure you know, like, oh, you can, no, no. Look at that. That's not a, that's not, hell no. So 2400 KV motors is not a 6S, especially on 2207s. So this is a four inch quad cop, four S quadcopter. I don't know why the hell they did that. They have to fix that. So yeah, this is a four S and the motors, they're not really saying much here. 
turbo, which is pretty old, whatever camera, 40 amp ESCs, a 405 flight controller. Um, it could be worth a try. I mean, it looks really nice. It has a lot of proper stuff with it. Hopefully all those things actually do come in the packaging. So they give you Dell props, TCMMRC. I've heard of this somewhere, but I don't know where. Anyways, it looks pretty interesting. So this is the last one on the link. If you want to check it out, go ahead. And um, yeah, it's probably cheaper to buy a pre-built now than actually building your own, to be honest. Um, this is like a great example right here to practice on for 200 bucks. So yeah, definitely worth a try, actually. And everything's linked down below. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.